Nick. Nick. What's up, dude? <laughs> I'm heavy <laughs> on, big man. What's going on with you? Dude, just winding down from the workday, man. It's so hot out here. Like, I, I work from like eight to eight to five, eight to six, something like that every day in Houston, man. It's like 100 degrees and humid, like 100% humidity. Very nice. Yeah, it's good for the skin, you know? <laughs> I mean, hey, you're talking to the guy who comes from Florida, so like, oh yeah, there you go. It. I get the humidity part. I mean, it's it's brutal, bro. It's, it sucks. People like like when we were out in Vegas, dude. It was this is okay, mind blowing that it was. We're in Vegas and it's it's eight o'clock at night. It's pitch black and it's a hundred and six degrees, bro. dude. It was a hundred and six degrees at one a.m. I know it was. It's it's absolutely mind blowing that it was that hot. But what, like just walking out of excision, I'm like, well, where, where's the cool mountain air? No, there's no cool mountain air. And it's like a, taking a hairdryer and just blowing it in your face. Oh, yeah. Not in that valley. No. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> I remember like the wind at the beginning of the thing, the set, I mean, it was like whipping. And I remember it was just like this dry wind that was just burning <laughs> my eyes, bro. It was just burning them. Like, <laughs> like little degrees, grains of sand. Literally 100 degree heat with sand just burning my eyes like it was just uh, like it was, it's pretty brutal i'm not gonna lie i don't know if i'd go back to vegas in july to be honest yeah i didn't have to take something big again for me to go back mm-hmm. in the summer but i will say compared to the humidity where we're from it was like a breeze like i thought it was like a walk in the park i was like okay this isn't bad at all like i'll just hydrate i'll be fine i'm not sweating my ass off like, yeah. I, don't, I don't walk out the door and immediately have swamp ass like it's fine <laughs> <laughs> And then, like, your, your sunglasses fog up and you can't see shit for, like, five minutes. You're, like, just patiently waiting for the fog to go away. Or you walk to your car and your jeans are sticking to your leg, bro. That's the worst is, like, for your job when you have to wear jeans and it's outside and it's humid. And it, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. It's, I, that's, like, me one of the worst feelings in the world, honestly, is literally sticky jeans, in my opinion. Like, I just hate the feeling of jeans that are sticking to my leg. Like, it's, like, just. And then the chafing. Ugh. Yeah, that throw that in there. Whatever I mean, yeah. that's bad. That's bad with anything. Doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. Just I can't handle the sweat in jeans. I remember like as a kid, we would go out for recess and play basketball. And I it just and you you don't notice it outside. And then you walk into the air conditioner and you're like, your clothes are just sticking and like they're almost like soggy on you. Like it's like you just got yeah. out of the water park and you're like I just came back from the from the basketball court, but it's just, <laughs> and then you smell like shit for school, like all the rest of the day, <laughs> dude. That's so funny too, is because like I never thought of that as a kid. Like I like like you bring that up, but like didn't probably dawn on me till middle school that it was like, yeah, I'm outside, I'm sweating, like I probably like reek, and I'm just going, I'm just, ah, <laughs> back in the classroom. Here I go. I probably smell like rotten crabs and prawns. We're on grass. <laughs> I mean, is that is that not an accurate statement? I guess you might be right. I don't really exactly remember <laughs> the smell of things, but uh, yeah, that's funny. Nah, just horrible. But yeah, yeah, it's much better, much better out there. I don't know. I like it out there. I, would you ever yeah. go, move out there? Did you ever move out there to Vegas? Not Probably necessarily, not. not necessarily Vegas, but just like out west, I guess. Out west. Yeah. Would Colorado count? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Cuz cuz I road trip through Colorado. I that that's like an every year thing for me now. Uh, I mean, hell, I'm wearing the Rocky Mountain National Park shirt. Uh, like first time I went was February, March 2020, and my buddy Dustin took me snowboarding for the first time and went out, well, I think it was like five-day trip we snowboarded for four days and well it was a six-day trip now i'm thinking about it because you know flying there and flying back but uh it was out in durango and i gotta say man the west part of colorado is probably my absolute favorite place on earth i mean it, it's just incredible the the amount of uh, the amount of just mountainous areas is pretty unique versus the other parts of colorado and I mean, don't get me wrong. Rocky Mountain National Park, like, fucking awesome. Like, just 
you know, you're going up Trail Ridge Road and it's one of the highest roads in North America and you're just looking down, you see just all these mountains for miles and miles and miles. <laughs> but going to the west side, it's a lot of canyons and a lot of just really unique mountains. Not any, you can't find it any place on earth. Like I'm sure, I mean, you went through Zion. So, I mean, I'm sure that's incredible in itself. I'm yeah, sure we'll the further to, we'll west to get you go. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, um, it, I mean, you're talking about Colorado west, west of Colorado, kind of northwest area. Yeah, well, well no, southwest. Like Durango, uh, Silverton, uh, Ure. Ure is considered the uh, the Switzerland of Colorado. It's absolutely beautiful. It's like this little village in, in the middle of all these mountains, like giant, like just behemoth mountains surrounding everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's no town like it. And then, like tell you right, that's probably where I would move. Definitely, okay, I know that town. Yeah, the other ones I'm not too familiar with quite yet. But no, I yeah, the, well, the west side of Colorado is just. I mean, that's where I've done the hiking when I went out there too. It's just absolutely, nice. just absolutely gorgeous. Like you say, breathtaking. I mean, that's that's. It's honestly one of my states I'd move to. I'd be okay with moving there. I yeah, I mean a lot there. So, dude, and honestly, like there's so many places where you can just like immediately like go off a trail or something like some random dirt road and it's nothing but free country everywhere like it's, it's open range like there's no national park nothing like you just drive down there and i've seen people camp like on the sides on the pull-offs and and stuff like that and this one road in particular is outside of silverton and uh i was i was with my grandpa this, this is like august last year um I, I just picked up my grandpa and a friend of mine. I just said, screw it. Y'all want to go on a road trip? And I was, they're like, oh, yeah, let's go. And I was like, all right, we're going to Colorado. Get pre-prepared for like a whole week. So <laughs> we drove around the whole entire state. But the last day or two, I took that dirt road. And it was like 15 miles. Like, and like halfway through, it turns into this one-lane four-wheel drive road. I, I mean, it was awful because it was like, just super rocky like my truck's just like bah, 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 just bouncing up and down <laughs> and, i mean it's four wheel drive so it can handle it but i was like holy shit man like <laughs> am i gonna fall off the side of this cliff or what <laughs> like what's gonna happen and uh once we got to the end of it you drive through this little river and it's just like a little just a little camping area it's like a valley and there's this just one trail and you can kind of see it it goes up the mountain and my grandpa couldn't make it but a friend of mine my friend and, and I went up there and, you know, got some legal Colorado marijuana stuffed in our <laughs> pockets. And we just walked down that trail and probably walked like three hours. And I, I got to say, man, I, I don't think there will ever be a better hike than that one because it, it's you go through this forest like it's almost like a surround sound system with all the birds and stuff that are just kind of like flying everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's like you're in an aviary and then you get up like i think a thousand feet or something like that and it's just like this valley and you just see like the the mountains aren't even like that high compared to you but you're already like eleven thousand feet up right and <laughs> i mean dude you could just see everything it was a beautiful day it was like 75 degrees and sunny it, oh man like I, right there that sold me i was like okay someday in my life i'm going here like that eh, i'm sold you know. Yeah, especially just because like the outdoors is the main attraction. I mean, that, that's of even course. for me. It's like that's why I want to move out there. It's not, it's not for the legal weed. It's not for Denver. It's not for Colorado Springs. Although Colorado Springs is beautiful because of the mountain. Yeah, it is. But like that, it's just because of the pure things you can do outdoors that we don't really get on the East Coast or Middle America. You just don't get that. And you stuff. definitely don't get it in Houston. Like no. it's flat. It's <laughs> no, flat. Yeah. Oh, like, it's huge. There. It's like a hundred miles wide and a hundred miles, a uh, hundred miles up and down, but it's like, it's just flat. There's nothing here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same, same where I lived. Yeah. Same where I lived. Uh, where I'm at now is a little different. I'm about, it's not, I call it like the stepping stone to the Rockies is where I'm at. Like it's, I'm in, I'm near in the, the Appalachians and the Smokies now and it's beautiful and I love it, but it's like, there's, I don't know how to explain it to people besides like, it's, it's like legitimately like rolling mountains. Like they're just like, there's no real jagged peaks like you get in the rockies and out, out west you just get these monster mountains that just can tower over the ones around them and they, they make for amazing views and amazing hikes that you just again you just don't get anywhere else i you know what's funny is speaking about west and stuff like i really want to go to montana i've been hearing 
I don't know why it's been coming up lately, but it just has been about like going out to Montana and hiking and stuff like that. And it's, I uh, hear even that is so different um, than oh, yeah. even more di- different than Colorado. And what's like one of the, one of the fastest growing cities right now, I believe is it's not in Montana, but it's in Idaho is Boise because of its location, which is just shocking. You're like Boise, Idaho. And they're like, <laughs> Boise, Idaho. Like people want to be near the mountains and stuff. So, I mean, can you yeah. blame them? No, not at all. I have- My parents actually go and they road trip, like they have an RV. And so they, I mean, they literally just got back from Colorado right before I went to Vegas. And, uh, but they, they go all the way to Montana, bro. They, they've been to Glacier National Park. They're borderline uh, professional photographers. So like they'll go there and they'll take like 10,000 photos and they'll come back and they'll edit like night and day, just edit and edit oh and gosh. edit. And so like in my living room, I got like, all their pictures are blown up on canvases from all their trips everywhere so you got a couple of like montana pics of like this like just clear glass lake and and a giant mountain in the background like on a dock like just incredible stuff like i'm so jealous whenever they go because i'm just like take take me with you please i don't i don't want to stay here and work that's the most beautiful thing too is something about a lake up in the mountains it just appeals to me I just love it so much. Like, I just want to like sit and just, I just want to sit all day. Yep. And just look at it. Just look. Just take and, it all in. Take it all in and just look. Like, and I feel like even after a full day of sitting, I wouldn't get enough, you know? Like, right. No, you'll never get enough. I don't think I would ever be tired of the mountains. I know. And it's so funny to hear people move to our side of, you know, or Texas. They move to Texas or to our coast because they live out there. And it's like, I can't imagine. I can't imagine why you'd come over here. And then they're like, <laughs> like, you know, what's funny is, is um, we had a buddy that moved to Colorado a couple of years ago and uh, I went to visit him and all his friends, you know, they're like, oh, you're in Florida. Oh, the beach, man. The, you know, they like, that's their thing. They're like, the beach is crazy. And I'm like, what are you all talking about? Like, I've been here forever and I see it all, every day. And it's just like, <laughs> really just touched for me. But the mountains, I'm like, yes, this is beautiful. And they're like, oh, the beach is just gorgeous. Like, I love it. I'm like, what? Dude, I'm an hour away from the beach. And it's like, I mean, Galveston's like, it's cool because it's like a tourist attraction or whatever. And it's a historic town. But it, it draws a sketchy crowd and the beaches are dirty. You go like maybe 15, 20 miles to the, uh, to the southwest at Surfside. Now that, that's a pretty good beach because it's like just secluded. Like there's no, there's no like, uh, what am I thinking of? Beach houses or anything like that. Like it's all, it's just like beach and then sand dunes and then like marsh, just nothing. And the waves actually get pretty big. So like, I, I enjoy it every now and then, but I don't go like, Oh, let's go to the beach brother. You know, like just absolutely Hulk Hogan action. dude that's <laughs> where i'm from is clearwater hulk hogan hogan's beach they got fucking hulk hogan's got a bar now out on the beach it just opened. Oh, shit. crazy shit yeah that's uh one of our many claim to fames that we're hmm. from that and hooters the original hooters is from where i live hey i used to be a fan of hooters used to be a fan of hooters and then their food got shit and i'm like eh. yeah yeah now twin peaks twin peaks is where is that dude twin peaks <laughs> Twin Peaks is like, I don't know. It's the mountains. That's it. That's all you have to say. It's the <laughs> <laughs> Understatement. The fact that you like mountains, it's like, they're, I don't know. It's so weird that that's the concept is like, they're in mountain. They're in like redneck, ge- like lumberjack. <laughs> is what I'm trying to say that damn. And like, and it's, yeah, I don't know. Like they're in fucking boots. They're wearing boots when they, I don't know. It's just, just they, work it. they work it. <laughs> hysterical it's, it's hysterical to me i knew i had one hey, i had one they friend got good worked, food. i had one friend that worked there she made bank i'll give her that go for go her so i i mean i don't judge you know like you make i mean there was a bunch of desperate guys that want to tip you just because they want to get with you like why not like if if you got it work it yes and it's not as uh revealing as only fans so like do, 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 stay in your lane as a, you know right yeah right that's why it is wild though it's 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 wild to me that like what you just said like there's these places that serve food that's it they don't serve anything else and they just right. like our entire staff is going to be very pretty girls and um it's going to attract a lot of men and they're like that's the business model and it's like mm-hmm. and then it just works it just works 
smart concept. The uh, the golden age of entrepreneurship. What can I say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. <sighs> yeah. Well, cheers to that. I'm gonna take a quick yeah. sip here. I've been sipping a little bit here, but uh, now we'll get a cheers in. Well, I appreciate you uh, let me hop on, man. Like, you know, I we were chilling in the hotel room. I was like, damn, this guy wants me to hop on a podcast. I've never been on a podcast in my life. Like, <laughs> I, I guess, like, sure. I don't know. We were chilling. We were having a good time. So I was like, why not oh, have him on? Like, mine as well. I mean, oh man, you're a cool dude. Like, I, I was like, ah, fuck it, why not? Like, this guy's <laughs> cool. Like, we're just chilling in the hotel room, like, just patiently awaiting excision. I'm like, yeah, all right, why not? We'll we'll do that. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're vibing. That's what this is all about. This is, uh, I love just having, like I self told you before, like just people that I think are you doing unique shit, and I do think you're doing some unique stuff as well. And and then Appreciate it's that. like, all right, oh, we also vibe well together. Let's boom, boom. That's two things right there. It'll be an easy going, easy going podcast. So I'm excited. We got, a lot. we got a lot. We got a lot to hit. You know, if we keep we do. going. But no, dude, um, excision was wild. The funniest shit ever was you taking that nap. <laughs> you're bro. taking that nap bro like i've i just never seen it like up close and personal i guess i've heard <laughs> of people being like yeah, i'm gonna go to the back and take a nap but like you took a nap like you were right out. in the middle of the crowd <laughs> right the middle, you were out bro <laughs> i you know dude i i flew in i flew in like what i i got up at four in the morning here got to the airport around like 5 15 or so flight flew out about 6 15 and obviously like i'm i'm going back two hours yeah and i didn't i didn't expect vegas to be pacific time i didn't you know i didn't think of that i was like oh it's mountain time like, this is not that bad no i went back two hours and i was like oh, oh well shit okay i guess this is fine and then my obviously my buddy didn't you know he didn't fly in until like 2 50 the next day and I'm like, ah, oh, man, like, okay, well, at least I got other friends to hang out with. Cool. <laughs> but that whole day, no sleep, no rest. Like, by the time the show rolled around, like, I had I had some energy for calcium and Hesh. And Hesh didn't really impress me, but it, it is what it is. That's just people's preference in music. But after that, I, I think it was Kai Wachi. I think I, think I fell asleep during Kai Wachi. Yep, Kai Wachi. <laughs> so, so I missed. Kaiwachi, I missed Atlians, I missed Sullivan King. Who else was there? Sullivan King, uh, you were like half and half away because I talked yeah, to you a little bit, bit, but you were just like, you just weren't ready to get up yet. You were just like, <laughs> just like, just like that morning when you wake up and you're like, oh, and then you just kind of lay around and like look on your phone for like an hour. That's what you were doing. Like that was your morning. You were just like, eh, I'll get up in a second. I'll get up in a second. <laughs> it was rough. It was rough. I mean, uh, you know what? Uh, uh, I, I can really sleep anywhere. I, I've, I've got pictures of me like knocked out at the studio. They call me Nick at night because I, I just so easily fall asleep, <laughs> like just dead. Like that my, my buddies can be like spinning a, like a practice set in their house. And I'll just be like dead on the couch right next to the speaker blasting like hard dubstep. Like I can, I could pretty much just knock out like on the spot if I really wanted to. And, uh, <laughs> So yeah, I I can't remember who else played. I think I, I think I named them all. But uh, as soon as that bass hit for Excision, and it they totally turned up the the sound system for that. I I know they did. They kicked it up like a huge notch. Oh, dude, a hundred percent. You know what's so <laughs> weird about that is that literally like we were in the middle of the crowd, and I'll, I'm looking around, and I'm like, I can't even hear the music. Like I'm. All I hear is our group talking and then the people around us talking and yelling and screaming and I can barely hear the music. It was so weird. And you're absolutely right. When Excision came on, they bumped it up. I don't know why it was so low the whole night, like legitimately the whole night. I mean, openers, I guess. But I mean, it was a yeah. one day. It was a one day festival, though. I mean, <clears throat> honestly, why not crank it up? But I mean, if it was cranked up, I probably would have been a little bit more awake, I think. But I was like, uh, you know what? I already sleep to this music sometimes. Like, I just let it go on autoplay sometimes, and I'll just knock out. So I was like, eh, okay, this is no different. I'll just sleep right in the middle of this crowd. At least I have people around me I trust. That's why. And, uh, and, yeah, no, as soon as Excision hit, and that it was that big, like, boom, like, just rattled my brain. I was like, 
oh, I, I'm awake, I'm awake, I, I'm here, I'm here. I'm here, here. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I mean, honestly, that was probably the best decision set I've seen. That I've only seen him like two or three times, but that that was definitely that was definitely the one right there. And I guess it was mostly because of the production. Like, I'm I am a sucker for production. If you if your show does not have good production, I'm not going to enjoy it. Like, yeah, you could have good yeah. music, but. 50% of it is having that visual audio visual experience. And if you don't have that, then it's not giving that crowd that kind of that oomph that it needs. And I think that's what excision does really well. Um, you know, the pyrotechnics, the lasers, the, the see through uh, led screen that, you know, it, you could see through it during the day, but at nighttime, it looks like it's just 3d. It looks like you're watching, like you're going in some fantasy world or like you're in VR yeah. or something. Those are those new screens that they've all been getting out now. And they're, they're, they are absolutely killer. I mean, com you didn't think it could get much better visualized. I mean, obviously it can like TVs and stuff have always gotten better, but like right. just the way those screens look, it's like, what? It's so, th I can see right through it. It's thin. And it, it was just, pretty weird. It, it blows your mind how crazy it does. The also crazy thing is you're talking about the production. Bro, he got the building behind the stage. All that the projected windows, all yeah, the windows. All the windows were synced up to the screens, bro. What? And the then the fire? other building had the giant X on the side of it. Yes, yes, it did. Behind on the back left, if you're facing. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah, yep. crazy, crazy. I mean, and he, that is what he's known for is his production. I think. I think that's not that he yeah. doesn't make good music. I listen to his music without the visuals, but like that together makes it that much better. Um, yeah, and he has that saying, you know, visual or audio visual experience, and it's absolutely 100%. It's something to like, obviously, you see a lot more DJs kicking into that and, and digging into that because, like, it's you're getting not only you're, you're hitting two senses basically, or mm -hmm. yeah, sight and ears. <laughs> I had to think about that for a second, <laughs> <laughs> you're right, though, sight and you're hearing, you're getting so it's not just one, like, that was music, that's how music's evolving slowly but surely, right. In a sense, is it's going, it's bringing in that visual aspect of it to the music where you can hear, you can hear an excision song, right? And you can think of the visual, like you can, you could picture it in your head. Definitely. You see the big giant robot like punching the screen yeah. or like shooting, like a giant T Rex shooting lasers out of its mouth or something. Right. Which like, is just fucking unheard of. Like, wow. Yeah. I, I don't know of any other artist that does that. Like, that's, that's just an insanity to me. Like, that's like the, the fact that, music and visuals the way it's evolved and, and i think i got into edm like 20 2012 2013 um uh, i saw well okay before that you know i was listening to edm like avici and and all those guys uh but my first like introduction to raves i saw an after movie to, for tomorrowland and it blew my mind i was like there, there's this many people like gathering in one yeah. spot with all these artists and it's just one giant festival with all these crazy like lasers and visuals and stuff i was like oh my god like i i can get into this and yeah to see it progress the way it has um especially after going to my first festival that was in 2016 uh it was called something wonderful it was out in dallas and uh tiesto die die life tritonal um I regret one thing and I never heard of Illinium until like two or three years ago. And he was playing the other stage, like right when he released his new or his first album, uh, ashes. ashes. Mm -hmm. And I, I looking at the lineup now, I regret every bit of that, not going yeah. to that set. Cause well, you know, that shit happens, see, man. It's just something you, that's just something that is going to happen when you start because I mean, you're going to have some friends that bring you to those people or they're going to show you them before to get you into it. Not always, right. not always the case. Cause some people just go on a whim, like, Hey, I'm going to go fuck it. And right. they go, and then they end up liking it. Like that's happened to me. And so uh, I, I, discovered got marshmallow. I got lucky seeing Elenium for my first time, first festival ever saw him. And I don't remember why I don't remember who took us or why, but we did. And, um, but then the festival. Did, it was a smaller one SMF in Tampa back in the back home. Mm. But yeah. Mm. And then, that ain't no small festival. I mean, it's not. I mean, it, in comparison, it's not as big as the other ones. I guess you're right, but you're right. Enough. It's, it's a medium size, medium. We'll call it a medium size. But like, at uh, the next festival I went to, like, 
there like I there was excision and seven lines who like seven lines I'm a diehard seven lines fan now and like I just didn't see him just didn't see him it happens like that's just something right the territory you know yeah I totally I think I got into seven lions about like 2016 or 17 um I can't remember what track it was I think strangers or something like that yeah and now I've seen them I've seen them three times three times and every single set just gets harder and harder and harder I'm like damn he's transitioning into like this dubstep artist but it's like the best dubstep I've ever heard like melodic dubstep is my shit that that is in my opinion one of the best EDM genres out there and this guy does it so well and then he mixes in like super vibey like future bass and then he goes like yeah nice either mid-tempo or like super fast side trance like i'm like he just makes me want to like high kick my knees and just like run around the entire place dude in his it's just it comes down to his transitions and he's so good at transitioning from one song to another like just it's not comparable so just so good at like you like those all those genres that he puts into one set he puts like four or five if not more into one set and it's like it just it shouldn't match up mash up the way it does but it just is so smooth Fits perfectly and perfect yeah absolutely Fits perfectly and then his his uh his production it's like watching a movie like nah, i mean i what, what's that song that's it, i think it came out last year uh as part of his ep only now only now and th- those visuals that he played because i saw him at lbw this year it was in april Same. and Dude, it, it he played that and it was like I don't know, it's hard to explain. It was like crystals that were like reflecting like prismatic rainbow light. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. it was like super detailed. And I'm like, okay, I, I'm sober right now and this is like just fucking me up on another level. I'm like like this guy is just on another planet right now. It's like just ridiculous. Yeah, and our man's got the throttle going, so he's always got, he's got a lot of things going for him. He <laughs> is in a throttle. Like, what? How does that happen? For real, dude. And I think those two chicks are a part of a music group themselves. Yeah, they're a uh, gem and Tari, Tari, Tari. I don't. I might pronounce that wrong. I apologize. Mm. But it, yes, I don't yeah, know. <laughs> yeah. Like that's crazy. Um, it is. It's just. Yeah. It's nuts. Um, when you travel do you go mainly for festivals or just kind of all over the place i know we talked about but off before the podcast we talked about like traveling to keep our sanity and that's definitely something i do myself i, I love traveling nor nor do i want to be someone that just sits around and in the same old town all the time it's just not something that's right. me but, it's not good for the soul i mean everyone's got their thing everyone's different you know so i got some friends that never travel and that's to you know to their credit that's them i I get it they do their thing yeah Uh, and then but yeah what is it that you when you go to get away and 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 keep that sanity what would it be for well that really depends because like i work so much right like monday through friday some days saturdays at least 10 hours in the heat all day every day that alone wears on me and then doing doing the whole music thing which we'll get into later it's uh you know, it, it's a lot, you know, on the weekends, I have to go to a show and that's going to last till like 2am or I have to go hang out in the studio and network. And I mean, don't get me wrong. It's fun. Right. Like I enjoy it a lot. It's a passion of mine, but it, it's still like, you just need, you need time to decompress. And so that's why I kind of, I go and travel like that. And when I do like, it's not necessarily festivals. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I love festivals, but I've never traveled out of state to go to a festival ever never um and so going to vegas was probably my first time doing that on my own Mm -hmm. like my own decision to go do that um and it was awesome Uh, but when i travel like I, i have a friend up in milwaukee so i you know go over there and visit him sometimes for like four or five days go like jet ski in the middle of wisconsin or you know, go snowmobiling in the winter. I've been to a couple Packers games. Uh, like, it's cool. And then, uh, you know, snowboarding. I've been to Salt Lake City. I've been to, you know, Colorado. Been to New Mexico to go snowboarding. Um, and then doing road trips in the summer. Uh, yeah. You know, all, those things, all those things are important, I think. At least to do them once or twice just to 
get an idea of what you like, what you can do again. And they also all bring some type of different experience involved. I mean, like, you know, jet skiing out in Michigan. Like, I mean, I went one summer up to um, I, my family is near the Wisconsin, Illinois border. And we went out and then we went like up to the down. We drove out to the Mississippi River and then like did the boat for like two days on the river and like had a house on the river. Like, and, like, that's dope. You wouldn't. Th- yeah. You're like, oh, like, that, like some people. I don't know if you don't try it you don't know if you like it you know it's like if you just gotta try these different things that might sound like like they might sound boring but like it's obviously like going to going to a river house you know in the middle of, in the middle of <laughs> Iowa awesome. doesn't sound like it's not like going to a house in Tulum but like you get a different experience you get still get away you still get some type of new environment and like mm-hmm. you get that break that you need um and see new things and be around cool people if you're bringing in people yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. And sometimes you got to do trips with friends. Sometimes you do trips by, you know, you just maybe one friend go by yourself. So who knows? I haven't traveled by myself yet. Like since I've been old, like obviously I've gone and visited family by myself, you know, like when I was younger, like that was a way to get away. Right. Be like, Oh, I want to go visit my aunt. And then my aunt's like, yeah, come on up. And I just go stay with her. <laughs> but like not, since I'm older, I haven't like been like, yeah, I'm going to go to by myself and just see what happens. Like, yeah, I would love to do that one day. I'd love to do that to a festival too. Just go by myself, not know anyone and just like make it work, make it happen. You know, showing up to a festival by myself, I don't know if I could do that. And, and <laughs> I don't know. I have to know at least one person there. Otherwise I'm just like, eh, like I don't know anybody here. Like they don't know me. A lot of people don't want to socialize like that. Like, I'm a very social person. I'm easy to talk to, but a lot of people, you know, they're on a different vibe or they, you know, they don't want to be bothered bothered, or they're with other people or what other, like, I'm just like, eh, you know, but I mean, I, you know, going to Vegas was pretty much my idea. So I guess that would be somewhat similar, but you know, I did have a buddy of mine that I met up with you guys. Like, I don't know. It's, but I've definitely done trips by myself like that where I've gone to like West Texas. Like I'll just do a road trip to like, enchanted rock out in fredericksburg it's like a giant boulder it's like a couple thousand feet and you just hike right up it um like stuff like that i do fairly often but going going to like colorado or somewhere like that just by myself and i don't know anybody i don't know i don't think i've done that yet Uh, i really want to i mean and maybe not alone because like I don't know. I want at least one person there, at least to share the experience. You know what I mean? I understand. I get exactly what you're saying. If you could travel to any destination, you spin your magic wand, boom, it happens, and you're there, where would it go? You get to go for a week. That's a tough question because there's a lot of places. I know it's a tough question, but there's one. Everyone can think of one. Well, I would say it can be anywhere in the world, like any, any place at all. Yeah, let's let's go. Let's go anywhere in the world. I'm in. I would say I'll even let you do two. Just so you that way if you really haven't struggled between two, go ahead. Okay. Sweden. Cause mountains, the Swedish Alps, like or the Swiss Alps, like that's like that's so beautiful. I want to go snowboarding in the Swiss Alps. That is on my bucket list, hundred percent. Um Valid. number two. <sighs> There's so many places that I, that I still haven't experienced. I, I got you. But, um, let's go either Norway or Iceland or Greenland. Like, you know. So, yeah, somewhere in that area. I got you. Somewhere got in that you. area, like, like Northern Europe, where there's lots of mountains, lots of beautiful places, uh, you know, really primo snowboarding. That's like some of the best snowboarding in the world. And um, I don't know, like, I think I think it's either I think it's Greenland, it, just super beautiful place where it's like just mossy green, and lots of like rivers and waterfalls and just sheer cliffs. Like that's you're something thinking, that's, you're thinking Iceland more. Yeah, Iceland is that Iceland? Yeah, because Greenland is in North America and it's way more colder. It's like in ancient, um, not ancient, but like in Viking times, supposedly they called Iceland Iceland on purpose so that people wouldn't go there because i mean obviously there are areas where it's very icy and stuff like that but they call it that on purpose people wouldn't go there and then they call greenland greenland so people would go there supposedly 
Not sure if that's really true, but that's what I I've heard. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, I think your Iceland is what you're thinking of for sure. Okay. They've got a lot of, they do have cold parts. They have hot springs. They definitely have waterfalls, a lot of good hiking. Um, yeah. yeah. Like I'm all about that. Like any, any Europe kind of trip I want to do at some point. And even Italy, like Italy is a place I would love to visit at some point. Like, like have a glass of like Italian wine and have like <laughs> some Italian nice, you know, just chef's kiss uh, Italian dish on side of a cliff that's overlooking the overlooking the sea out there. Like that'd be pretty cool. You know, you know, that's hard to beat. I would say you know, if I had to pick two, it'd be between the Mediterranean, but I probably would know. I would probably say Greece just because of you got the Greek Isles there as well as just the ancient rich history, which I'm a big fan of that. I'm a, I'm a nerd. When oh I'm yeah. Stuff. Big time. And then I probably would have to go with like, thailand or something something southeast asia i gotta go there, okay. you know just gotta go experience that it's something it, your and your money goes far there that's why i feel like i could do a lot there <laughs> <laughs> i mean you're not wrong there you're not wrong there i mean even mexico you go to mexico like I, i've heard i've never been out of the country but i've heard that uh I, that just over there like a four-star meal is like 10 bucks in mexico i'm like yeah, where do I sign up? Like it's yeah, I mean it's, it's like that in South America and Central America too. I I have friends that have gone to Costa Rica a few times and the same thing. They can, yeah, they yeah, and they can just rent a big old house, a bunch of them, and get a private chef and get horses for the beach and all that jazz. And it's like, oh, how much did you spend? Oh, Why haven't grand. I done this yet? <laughs> Two grand, and you're like, what? I looked at one point because I was thinking of like. I was like, you know, what? I wasn't like liking my job. And I was like, yeah, this was when I was back in Florida. And I was like, ah, you know, maybe I'll quit and I'll do like a month. And I don't a bunch of money saved up. And I was like, maybe I'll just do a month in like Mexico, like just a month. Rent a house. <laughs> and I was looking and you could rent like a, like a, a small mansion, big house, however you want to describe it, but like five bedrooms, four baths. You could rent one for like pretty nice. The whole month you could rent one for $1,200. I was like, for a month? Are you serious? I swear to God. I swear. Now it might have gone up because that was also kind of during COVID and stuff. But like, right. But I was like, I might, uh, I might do this. Like, I really <laughs> might, might do this. Might flee, flee from America for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And then my thought was like, I'll just hang there, and then I'll tell my friends like, Hey, I'm here the whole entire month of April. If you can come, just come, and then throw me like twenty five bucks a night something cheap it's still, it's, cheap for them. it's cheap <laughs> for them and you just throw me some cheap money and then you can stay as long as you want to it's like i and then you could have like different friends just coming in every weekend it'd be fun oh that'd be awesome yeah that'd fun. be insane i should I should have done it <laughs> yeah, we should we should plan a trip like that at some point like later down the line like some sort of trip i don't even care where it's at to be honest with you like go i still have a passport but I don't know if I'm ready to go out of the country yet with the whole like travel restrictions and all that stuff. You got to jump through like so many hoops right now for that. But like Utah or Colorado, something like that, where we can get away, go to the mountains. I'm down. You just let me know. Like, yeah, it'd be cool to get will... a house out in one of the parks for sure. I know like there was, oh, that'd be we, awesome. were, we were discussing at one point, it fell through. It was supposed to happen. Mm, it was supposed to happen the week of EDC Las Vegas. So back in May, we were discussing getting a house in Zion the week before. Um, and then it just, we were then, Oh, we thought EDC was happening. Okay. never mind. We're going to do EDC and it didn't happen. So it just all fell through, but yeah, there was someone, one of our friends was going to book it and rent a big old house, get some ATVs out there and just have 20 of us just chill at this house in Zion. It would have been freaking amazing. <laughs> Sounds like mega vibes. So that, that, that would be, the time of my life right there <laughs> like sounds just a like, couple of homies like <laughs> driving atvs through the mountains that sounds so sick sounds like you gotta go on a spiritual journey one of those days <laughs> yes dude absolutely that's go, that's crazy that, that that's an idea we're gonna we're gonna talk that in the book real yeah, quick oh, <laughs> heck yeah. that's the other thing it's like it's so like when you find friends that want to do that shit too it's so much more better. Like it's so much, so much more exciting. Cause it's like yeah, the vibes are better. Like they yeah. actually want to be there. Yeah. I mean, well that, and they're like, they'll friends that travel and like do that shit. Like, and first off friends that travel and then like I'm on vacation mode is like, that's when it's fun because like you, 
I don't know about you. Like, when I'm traveling, I, I truthfully, when I travel, I, I don't even look at my bank account. I'm like, nope. I'm on vacation. <laughs> I'll look at my yeah. phone. And I, it's just like, that's my mindset of when I go to travel. I'm like, okay, you're traveling, you're going in like three weeks. So you're going to save us some money for three weeks. And then you're not looking at your bank the entire time you're there. And like, uh-huh. and I, I keep like a running track as best I can in my head. But like at the same yeah. time, I'm like, nah, I'm on vacation. Don't want to worry about it. I've, I've been working this hard so that when I do get away from work, I don't have to worry about my shit. Like I, and you're not stressed. Yeah. Like that, exactly. that's the biggest thing. Like even, even in Vegas, I, I de- never looked at my bank account. Cause I was like, I do not want to be stressed for this trip. Like, I just want to come here, vibe out, go to some shows and be okay. Like, you know, it, some, I, I totally get where you're coming from. Cause I, I do, I'm probably in the same mindset as you when I do that for sure. I mean, I still like, you know, like you said, keep a mental track because like it's always important to know. But yeah, yeah, you know. I, th- I think when you when you value money, you kind of you you take that mental like you have that mental kind of calculator. It doesn't mean you're like spot on, but you can be like, okay, I think I might have been around this much money. Like, <laughs> right. like you, you, at the end of the day, you're not like, oh, I'm just gonna blow everything, and you know, you're not letting yourself go crazy that crazy. Like, right, I'm not dropping thousands. But you're having on black and roulette. <laughs> yeah, but you're having fun. Like you're making sure you're having a good time. Where you're like. Oh, I want to go have that steak dinner. I'm going to have that steak dinner. Mm-hmm. Oh, I want to buy. Oh, right at a bar that's really expensive. I'm going to buy a drink. I don't care. Yep. Like, who cares? Twenty twenty two dollars. Fine, whatever. Like I never pay. I would never pay for this at home. But you know what? I'm on vacation, so I'll <laughs> pay for that drink. You want to know how much the drinks were? Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's my big old boxers. What do- uh, you have two boxers? One. I have two boxers. A Chihuahua. I have two cats. I got two Amazon parrots, a bearded dragon, a 125 gallon fish tank, and then my koi pond right here. You are living large with these animals. <laughs> I got a zoo. How did you, yeah, how did you, how did you acquire the petting zoo? <laughs> I mean, honestly, my parents—they're just animal lovers, and so am I. I mean, but I'm a cat guy. Like that, my cat that I showed you—that's that's my that's my son right there. But I mean, just over time, like. Uh, one of our Amazon parrots, we got her from uh, Louisiana, and uh, she she was like a little baby. We had the hand feeder and like syringe feeder and stuff, and now she's like 12 or 13 years old, and she's got a 300-word vocabulary. Like, you can have a conversation with her. Like, she's the second most intelligent bird on the planet next to an African gray. Um, she's a blue-fronted Amazon. I mean, to- total intelligence. Like I- I've never seen a bird like carry on a conversation, like talk to herself all the time. And that's what she does. And then our other one, he's like a orange wing. I think he's a, he's a rescue. Uh, the previous owners, they-, they used to fight a lot and cuss at each other. So now when we have guests over or even when we don't, he'll go motherfucker, goddamn motherfucking bird motherfucking motherfucking bird but i'm a good boy and, and they're like, say i'm a good boy yeah <laughs> and, and you just my guest will be like did he, did he just say that uh yeah yeah he did yes he did like nothing i can do he's already learned it like at this point and these dude these parrots live to be like 80 90 years old it's insane like we, they last they'll they'll probably outlive me to be honest like it's insane like I, I don't really get how they live that long but they do how does the whole process of rescuing a bird come into play because like here's my thought is like you have animal shelters maybe that's where it was i have no idea but like you know dogs mm-hmm. or cats are there right i've never seen a yeah. bird there never seen a bird there well i mean it was a neighbor of ours and they're they're fairly close friends i wouldn't call them like super good friends but you know acquaintances or whatever like we've known him for a long time and we are we've already known we've already known the bird for like (laughs) ever since we first moved like since we first moved here like 18 years ago we've known this bird and they didn't want it anymore and the husband was dying of cancer so the the wife couldn't take care of it anymore and we're just like i mean fuck it i guess we'll take him in and i mean he's a little shit man he's his name is bandit he's not the nicest bird in the world i mean he's he's nice when he wants to be but you can't take him out of his cage without biting the shit out of you (laughs) like you have to you have to point a spray bottle at his face like dude you better step up or i'm gonna spray you like you better do it like yeah 
I mean, it just is what it is. You can't really teach an old dog new tricks. So he's, uh, he just kind of does his own thing. He just sits in the cage and like ring, rings his little bell, like make little like clucking noises. He'll be like, <laughs> just fucking ringing the bell. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> and all he'll do it in the middle of a movie or something. I'm like, bandit, shut up. Like, be quiet. I have to put the his little like, there's like a sheet on top of the cage. I have to put the sheet <laughs> over him to get him to shut up. Like, oh, that's the... <laughs> like I'm trying to watch a damn movie. Like, be quiet. <laughs> Bro, that's the funniest shit ever to me is that you can just put a sheet over the bird cage. Yeah. Just, just <laughs> bad, sheet. We will shut up. We will not talk. Just be like, oh, I'm in timeout now. I guess it's time to go to sleep. It's and then you don't hear that. It's terrible. Who is it? Trevor Wallace says that that tiktok where it's like i wonder who the guy was that discovered <laughs> the birds go quiet with the sheep i don't know that shit's so funny to me though like that they actually do that like it because like i've never had a bird but like it's like i have a, I have a friend that has a parrot and like i was like dude is this true and he was like it's 100 percent true like they just yeah they just dude, shut happens. up and go to bed and then you <laughs> second you pull it off they're like good morning <laughs> like <laughs> They're like, oh, hey, you're here to feed me? You want to give me a treat? Oh, my God. Like, you want to talk to me? Give me some attention? That's what they like. They just want attention. They want either food or to talk to you. That's really it? Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, the, the other one, Ollie, she, like, I can I can pick her up, no problem. Like, put her on my shoulder, put on my friend's shoulder. And she'll just chill. She actually has free room of the house. So, she's like, she'll, she'll pretty much fly everywhere in the house and then go right back to her cage. Um but she, she is loud, and she is the one that will the most like just, just do this screaming, squawking sound, and it's ear piercing, and you're just like ah, like shut up, dude, like here, step up, I'm putting you in your night cage, go go in time out, and like her her night cage is in my parents' room, so I'm just like here, go, go here, it's like good night, Ollie, night night, Ollie, and she'll she'll repeat it back to me like night night, Ollie. <laughs> you, put, you put her in the cage and you don't hear a peep from her like it's i mean honestly she's a piece of work man. It, it pets are just too funny they just do the darnest thing and that's a stare dude the squawking you just reminded me of this story that i asked listen my friend that has this bird like we stayed over at his house one night and um it was like in high school and like we kind of forgot like us not living there just kind of forgot like oh he has a bird and we're like in the kitchen making food at like 3 a.m. and this bird squawks and I remember me and my friend we literally just like because we were like moving stuff around we just like tri- like threw everything up in the air we're like Jesus God. like it just scared the absolute shit out of us and buddy of course my our buddy's just dying at us like oh the bird is just a bird you little babies like we're like what the fuck you mean that's the bird like, they came after us man oh that's hilarious like a fucking pterodactyl man I swear. <laughs> God, how terrifying pterodactyls would be. Oh god. Dude, if they were real. <laughs> like you just see the, you just see the shadow just cast across the ground. It's just like this big giant just like mega shadow and you just hear a oh like my just god, a, dude. Just if a weird how the world would <laughs> <laughs> and, like you just it's like Jurassic World, he just picks you up, like just got, grabs you with both arms and just carries you away you just see your friend just go off in the distance like happy trails happy trails there partner <laughs> <laughs> how the world would change with pterodactyls back <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i mean there's already there's already living dinosaurs right like you already got alligators and crocodiles like that's basically yeah, a dinosaur like, they're not as like apparent in life like i'm like just imagine ter- like pterodactyls are just like we just can't do anything about them. Like the Air Force just can't. Just can't do <laughs> they're, just, they're just here, and we have to put their armor's them. too great. Yeah, just <laughs> something. We just can't. We just have to like deal with that they're here, and like the appreciation for life that I would have every day of being like, "Whew, didn't die on my way to work." Today. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't. They didn't pick the white car today. <laughs> oh, they're not in the mountains. We're good. <laughs> well, yeah, you have to go hiking with spears and like constantly like look around and shit. <laughs> We're like, going back to the Stone Age now. Dude, but it'd be like the Stone Age with like cars. 
I don't even think a spear would that stop that thing, to be so, honest. That sounded like I was so stoned right there, unbelievably. <laughs> Just stone age. That sounds, like, that sounds like something cards. I would say if I was stoned. Stone age, but with cards. <laughs> <laughs> nah, dude, it'd just be terrifying. Dude. They'd just be. You think that would make the news, or would just be like a thing we accept? Like today, twenty people disappear, and you're like, <laughs> idiot. Like you know, like. <laughs> dude, honestly, I think I think it would probably freak the world out pretty much because it's like it's like that new Jurassic World movie that's gonna come out, right? Like, and, and uh, what was the second one called? It was. Um, I didn't see the second one, but they brought that dinosaur back, like the genetically mutated one, right? It, it was it was good, uh, or it was well, it wasn't as good as the first one, but it was good. Um, but all the dinosaurs released, like they released all the dinosaurs because they were gonna sell them off for like genetic weapons and and stuff like that. They, like they were gonna use the dinosaurs as weapons, so they were just <laughs> selling course. them to the to the Russians and and all that stuff. And uh, <laughs> so they released them because they were gonna die. And so now there's like a little sneak peek trailer of all these dinosaurs just really. What the hell is my cat doing up there? He's. <laughs> I just hear this like cracking, and it's like this. My cat's just like climbing down the Above fence. You. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, no, like basically in this third movie, all the dinosaurs are just released throughout North America. Um, and so, like, there's like the scene where the surfer is like, you know, go surfing this big wave and you see this giant, I don't even know what the dinosaur is called, but that big sea creature, yeah. you see it just like in a silhouette of this giant ass creature, just like about to eat this guy, <laughs> just like following right behind him in this big ass wave. Like, dude, if that happens, like, I, I don't know, I'd probably go, go live like a mountain man and just be be away yeah, from everything we have to be living in cave we have to be cavemen again we'll be back in the yeah cave, cavemen bro. yes we'll be back in the caves no doubt no doubt <laughs> hey man i was in boy scouts be prepared <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my god you, i know the way of the land did you mention the giant shark thing in the ocean and that just makes me think of the ocean in general and how absolutely terrifying it is <laughs> Oh, dude, just, uh, when was it? It was two weeks ago, uh, or a little less than two weeks ago. I went to Galveston, like, right after I got back from, uh, from Vegas. Uh, it was, like, a, the next weekend. Um, I had to go that weekend. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, dude, honestly, <laughs> like, I had to drive up to Dallas to do some networking stuff on Saturday after work. So I it drove four hours up there and then the next, like in the morning and I didn't go to bed till like two. And then I woke up at seven to go back and I drove all the way to Galveston, which is like five hours. And, uh, went there and we're just like, we were chilling at Slitterbond. It's like a huge water park here. And, um, afterwards we're like, dude fuck this honestly like half the rides are shut down and all that stuff so i don't and the people like the crowd was really sketchy there wasn't a bunch of good looking women at all like it was just it was weird <laughs> like it, it was it was really I weird I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah and i'm like uh you know what this vibe ain't cutting it like let's go let's go to the beach and so we did and just we were like body surfing and the waves were pretty good and we're we we're body surfing and i put my foot down and something super sharp, like, stabbed my foot. I don't know what the hell it was, but it hurt so bad to the point where I was, like, bleeding pretty bad on the bottom, like, like right on the sole of my foot. <laughs> and, dude, I, I was like, okay, no more. I'm going to wear water shoes from now on. Like, no no chance of me, like, ever walking in, in the beat like, in the ocean again without water shoes because that – like, you can't, like, in the Gulf of Mexico, it's so muddy. And it's mostly because the, the Mississippi uh, runs out there. Uh, the Brazos River over here runs out there. And all, like, a fairly close proximity. Like, New Orleans is five hours away from here. Mm -hmm. Five or six. And um, so, it's just, I, like, it's not bad. But think of, like, bathtub water. How it's just, like, super warm. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. just you know like and just muddy like you can't see shit like you cannot see your feet yeah, not even like mexico. a foot of water <laughs> that's that's just the gulf of mexico and, and i guess that's why we get so many hurricanes and all that but 
uh, yeah. dude, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know what the hell it was, but it, it was sharp. I, it may have been a broken bottle, or it may have been a stingray, or a hermit crab, or something, but it made me bleed, and I was like, probably, great. It's probably just a sand dollar, just sp- mm-hmm. just just on its side just oh like, god <laughs> i mean even then that's still like bro it's like uh, it's opening a mystery it. box every time you take a step in the ocean like oh what are you gonna step on now are you gonna step on a hermit crab is it gonna latch onto your little toe like wh- what is what's gonna happen next dude you're not wrong you just have no idea yeah <laughs> you have no idea that's what's so like i don't know i just like like not even like the amount like what could be underneath the ocean it's also just the ocean itself like it's like, terrifying oh like you're in the middle of atlantic and there's like 45 foot waves and you're like what what do you mean there's 45 foot waves <laughs> out in the middle of the ocean like what's causing this like, i can't even imagine there, that dude, there's this movie poseidon which i like saw when i was little bro where there's like giant just I, I, giant wave like 100 stories tall or something I, not 100 stories 100 feet tall and like it just another slammed. classic unrealistic story <laughs> yeah it's just like i mean it's still unrealistic or maybe it's not i don't know but it's just like it was like this one line of wave, like one tsunami wave in the middle of the ocean that just knocked this cruise ship over on its side. And like these people were trying to escape the boat. And like, I remember seeing that as a kid and like just terrified to go on a cruise ship. After that. <laughs> like just like terrified, bro. Dude, I've never been on a cruise. Cruises are, um, they are for the people that are too lazy to plan their own trip and to and to do their own thing now that being said they are fun because you don't have to plan anything (laughs) right you're literally just along for the ride yeah the that is that is one thing that's very fun about them is like you besides how disgusting you are that you're on this boat but you know no one ever thinks about that but the fun is fun that you can just like you're like all right i'm gonna plan this three months in advance and i'm gonna go on this boat and then we're going to go to Mexico and I'm going to do this and this excursion and I'm just going to pay for it all right now. And then when I get there, I'm not going to worry about anything. And like, there's no like schedule. To, I mean, some people might, might make the schedule, but like, I tell you what, when I did it, there was no schedule. It was like, ah, when do you want to go to dinner? Well, the restaurants are open between this and this time. So we'll just kind of figure it out when we want to go get dinner. The buffet's open till like fucking 10. Like, I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, or you can get, and you can still order room service. Like, so it's like, there's all this, like, there's so many options. There's always like two or three restaurants. There's bars everywhere within the restaurant. You got the casinos. Isn't there like an unlimited drink thing or something like that? You have to buy the that, but yes. Like, like it, there's an unlimited yeah. drink pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I would buy it. <laughs> Shit, I, that sounds well worth it. Like 50, 60 bucks. Yeah, okay, I'm in. That's like six drinks right there. <laughs> It's a little more than that, but uh, I think they're wow. like two hundred something. It's just, uh, it gets okay. up there. It oh. gets up there. You have to significantly drink a good amount for them to like, yeah. But oh, if I was on a cruise, that was like five days. I think I would drink that amount pretty easily. Oh yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And then like, I don't know, but there is something to be said the fact that you don't have to plan for anything. Like you can just right. Like, like there definitely is something that's fun about that. And then go to and Jamaica and, then, and all and those places. I haven't ever gone with like a group of guy friends, like it's just a group of friends, but like I could guarantee you you'd have a fun time doing that. Like there's, nice. like, there's just no way you wouldn't. Like with eight, 20, eight, eight to t- 12 people, y'all in your rooms, you get them all next to each other, and then you all just get fucking hammered the whole time. Like I'm guaranteed <laughs> you're gonna have a fun time. Then you go on some excursion and you're whitewater rafting and you're then you end up at a bar in Belize. Yeah, you're gonna have fun. Right. Just something, yeah. That man, that sounds awesome. And then uh, I've heard there's a. I'm getting eaten up by mosquitoes. Uh, there's a cruise that I heard that was like, uh, it was like a rave cruise. It was like a whole party boat of just nothing but like headliners playing this playing on top of the deck or something like that have, have you heard of that like uh what i know of is uh oh, excuse me. is um holy ship that's the main one i know of yeah and there okay. is some there's been some very big names that go on it and they're just on the boat too they're i mean when they're done with their set they're on there for five days they sometimes they play two maybe sets but like they're there for five days like they're just chilling just letting chilling, having fun yeah um i I host a podcast with this girl, Aid, uh, Vibe with Aid, who's a, uh, a big in the EDM community. And she nice. was at Holy Ship and like ran into Seven Lions twice, like just at the, like, cause he played a set and then she just like just ran randomly. Him. 
just ran into him in the elevator or she ran to Lewis child at the elevator, ran into him at like a set. And then like, she was at the buffet line and he was like right next to her, which was like, so fun. <laughs> so wow. Fun. But yeah. Yeah. Talk about a networking opportunity. I mean, Hey, it'd be fun. To, like, that'd be a fun cruise to do. That'd probably be one of the newer ones I would do. You know, you're raving all night. You're having a good time. So. Yeah, we might have to do some research on that. Make make a make a plan. Make a move. Don't well, tempt me with a good time, my friend. <laughs> tempt me with a good time. I'll say yes. It'll happen again. I, I know you will. That's, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll be there. No doubt about it. Yeah, we'll 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 create something. We'll do something for sure. No doubt about it. Your what's your next one? Freaky deaky, probably. No, I'm I'm probably gonna skip that. Uh, the lineup didn't really impress me that much. Like Dead Mouse is on it, Vinny VC, like a, Timmy Trumpet, like a bunch of big names are on there. But at the same time, I'm thinking to myself, like these are not artists that I'm really familiar with. Like Dead Mouse is, it's probably one of the first guys that got me in the EDM. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, respect to you. I'm thinking of going to Starbase. I want to go to Starbase. Slander and Alinium are my top two artists of all time. It doesn't even compare. Like it, Slander, I, I've seen their Good Vibration set. It was a uh, Slander B two B nightmare. Um, yeah, it was Seven cool. Lions, and it was the Glitch Mob, and it was at the, the was Alchemy Tour. New, yeah, the Alchemy Tour. Yep, That's and it was wild. at Smart Financial, and in my hometown of all places, like right down the street from me, five minutes they played at that venue, and it's like the sixth best venue in the world, apparently, as far as like sound and, and stuff. Yeah, um, jealous of that. Um, that's so incredible. But um, yeah, Starbase, man. I, I think I'm going to full send to that because the lineup to me is more enticing. It, like it's, it, it's just, I, I like future bass and I like yeah. dubstep and a good mixture of the two is really what I'm interested in. And all these artists kind of fit that description yeah you know, mm-hmm. i get it i yeah. i was going to go because that's now in the state that i am located in and it's Dude. three hours away from me so i was gonna three go hours. but i bought a lenny and red rock ticket and it's the same weekend not knowing that oh, so maybe just go to lenny and red rock and well go i mean it, in the ticket sold out though i like i'm pretty sure red rock sold out almost immediately Can, At least from my knowledge. I can work something for you. Yeah. Yeah. I can work something Ooh, for you. Starbase, Elenium, Red Rocks. Red Rocks is a bucket list venue for me. And seeing Elenium there would be even cooler. <laughs> so my group is going two days. We're going Thursday, I think it is, for the throwback set. And then Friday for the regular set. Oh. So, let me know. If you find tickets, let me know. I will go both days. I will let you know after this for sure. <laughs> I, I, I want to like, I would rather go with people I know than, than go somewhere else to a festival that's out of state and go alone. Like, like we talked about, like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. you know, I understand. Um, like being with a group of people that you vibe with is so much better. Oh, and yeah. the fact that Elenium, I can, I guess I can speak for both of us. That's our favorite artist. Like, yeah, yeah it's just, literally, yeah i've i've been uh it's i hate to say it, i've been back and forth so much because seven lions i think might be my number one now but elenium just has a place a, a big place in my heart he's the number it has to be number two but he, he's got a big place in my heart because it's who, who got me into edm his first set i saw when i went to my first festival so gotta 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 pay dues for dues are, dues are dues. i i feel that i feel that i you know i, I was thinking about starbase though just because i haven't seen a slander set in so long and their sets are the perfect amount of vibey and just melt your face. Like they break your neck <laughs> and then your heart. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Yeah. This year, Millennium does the same thing. So I, you know, it's like, yeah, it's it for tat. Like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. No, I, I totally get you. I, I, we'll, we'll, we will definitely discuss and uh, I'll, I'll find some tickets for you, no doubt. But uh, I appreciate, I appreciate, well, man, we're at like the hour and, hour mark here a little bit over um but we've had a yeah. great conversation i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna say let's call it now and i'm gonna have you on again to talk about the other stuff because we've just been vibing dude. for a straight hour dude i can't i can't <laughs> complain i can't complain we didn't get to talk hey, about man. It yet, so get, get a part two going absolutely I mean, we're gonna not? do it no doubt about it we're gonna do I it i mean i'm pretty sure we got endless things to talk about to be honest i i haven't even brought up the threesome after a linear <laughs> he brings it up with the last minute of the <laughs> 
<laughs> like I'll, I'll say I'll say that legendary story <laughs> for a little bit. <laughs> you know. I mean, but yeah, man. No, I, I, I really appreciate you letting me hop on and all that stuff, man. It was, it was cool. Like this was a cool experience. I had a fun time having you on, and like you said, we got we got plenty more to talk about. You'll be uh you'll be on again, no doubt. I'm gonna definitely oh, yeah, man. Again, so uh, let me know. I'm, gonna, gonna, I'm an open book. So. We're gonna end on that note there. All right, bye everybody. Hey man, peace, guys.